So let's talk about some of the details. The title of this slide is Big Change, Small Difference. We've changed things rather dramatically because we replace sigma with s. But in fact, things haven't changed that much at all because t is very much like z. Number one says, if n is large, t and z are almost the same. In fact, if you sketch a t density function and a z density function, you pretty much can't tell the difference by i. They're both symmetric, mound-shaped, have that characteristic bell curve. The T has slightly heavier tails, that's what they say. It's slightly wider out here, and slightly narrower, close to the center, but as far as you can tell, it looks like, like, like Z. The scale on the axis, if you looked at it, the scales are pretty much the same. Uh, over here for T, um, this is a little more spread out, we would see the the tail here is not quite sticking as close to 2 as it does here, but you really can't tell just by looking. For number 2 there, for small n, t is, we said that, t is slightly more variable than z, otherwise very much like z. The shape of t, I'm on 3 now, the shape of t depends on the sample size. So tables depend on the sample size n, but they list the critical values in terms of something else. Well, it's the same thing, but different. In terms of the degrees of freedom, which they usually right, is df, which is one less than the sample size. So we see degrees of freedom in other stat classes, so we'll just keep that terminology here. Uh, lots of statistics and procedures have something that's called degrees of freedom. I don't want to explain what it is because we don't have enough of the actual solid foundation of probability to talk about degrees of freedom, but that's how the tables are. Degrees of freedom in this case is one less than the sample size. In other cases, it's different numbers compared to the sample size. Number four says we can think of a t value as having about the same position in the distribution as a z because the t stars and z star critical values are almost the same number. So if we look at the table, so you look at the t, to the t star and the z star, they don't differ substantially. They differ enough that you might cause yourself to make a slightly different size confidence interval or have a different uh, different result of a hypothesis test if you use alpha equals 0 0.05. One of them might accept, the other one might reject if it's close to the borderline. But pretty much they're the same numbers. We still have to check simple random sampling. And we always check this out too, that the sample size has to be small compared to the population. Ordinarily that's not a problem. Population is usually huge. Sample size is usually like small, like 20 or 40 or something. Population is thousands. Everything is good. And we still need a normal population distribution if n is small. It becomes less essential for t procedures than for z procedures to have an exactly normal population distribution because we'll find out later on that t procedures are called robust. And robustness means they still function fairly well even if you don't have an exactly normal population distribution. None of the things we could carry out uh, work very well if you don't do sampling in an appropriate matter. You can't overcome that. But you could, the overcoming the normal population distribution, some statistics don't care that much as long as it's roughly normally shaped without outliers. Things can be okay. And T tends to be that way. We'll look at some more facts about T and we'll start doing some calculations in just a minute. Hang on there.